Good morning. If we could gather in the sanctuary, we'd have a, a full service before us uh, to come. But I do have uh, several announcements here this morning to uh, bring to our attention. Uh, the first one is that, uh, just a reminder, we have potluck after the uh, service here this morning downstairs in the fellowship hall. Uh, be mindful of that. Immediately following the uh, potluck, the ladies of the congregation will be gathering for uh, a time of prayer in the fireside room. So if you could join them with that, they would greatly appreciate that. That's right after potluck. Also, there will be no priesthood meeting next Saturday. No priesthood meeting that we normally have. That is Labor Day weekend. And so I know there's a lot of things going on, so we will not meet next Saturday. But we do have sacrament service next Sunday. I encourage everyone to come. Be mindful of the sacrament setting. We do have our sacrament prayer service at 930 that Sunday morning. Make that a part of your preparation to come and worship. Also, we do have a uh, business meeting scheduled for September the 17th at 1030 a.m. Uh, that is for the purpose of uh, selecting our pastor for the coming year. And also, Tony will uh, have us a budget update regarding our budget for this uh, year so far. Also, uh, during our service next Sunday uh, at the sacrament service, we will start passing the offering plates once again. We haven't done that for a couple of years now due to different uh, restrictions, but uh, the plates will no longer be in the foyer. Uh, we'll start passing the plates next Sunday. Also, the ladies of the congregation will have a get-together on Saturday, September 9th. We're going to go shopping at Cockrell Mercantile in Lee Summit. We're going to meet here at the church at 1030 in Carpool out to Lee Summit, and they plan on having lunch at La Fuentes in Lee Summit around 1245. So ladies, there's an activity of gathering on the 9th of September. Also, I'd just like to uh, take a moment and thank uh, Myra and Cindy for going out and braving the heat on Friday morning and picking grapes for us. Uh, I know it was short notice, but uh, when the grapes were ready, we had to pick them. And so Myra and Cindy went out and uh, picked grapes and met up here at the church along with Dick and Laura and stemmed the grapes. And through their efforts, we were able to get 17 quarts of uh, grape juice that we use in our sacrament services. So we're very thankful that uh, we have that opportunity to share together and to have uh, the homemade uh, juice for our sacrament settings. Also, we do have a service of ordinations coming up here in just a few moments. And so we look forward to our Heavenly Father blessing us in that. And so would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day and for the blessings of life. Father, we thank you for the cooler weather that is upon us now and just pray it as we gather in thy sanctuary that your spirit, Father, would uh, touch our hearts and our minds and enlighten us to that which you would uh, reveal unto us this day. And we thank you, Father, for the ordinances of thy church that we can witness, even that of ordinations, and pray that you would uh, be with our brothers this day as they are ordained and those who would be uh, performing them, Father that through the gift and power of the Holy Ghost that uh, you might be revealed unto your people. Bless us and abide with us. We do have uh, several activities in our congregation. Might you bless us in our desires to draw together and to be the people, Father, you're calling us to be, that we might reach out and love one another. Abide with us and bless us this day, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
been longing for home One day when the kingdom comes right here where we stand We will see the promised land mm-hmm. One day there'll be no more lives taken too soon One day there'll be no more need for a hospital room that falls will be wiped by his hand we will see the promised land mm-hmm. hallelujah there will be healing from this heartbreak we've been feeling we'll sing in the darkest night cause we know that the light will come and there will be healing Hallelujah. One day there'll be no more anger left in our eyes. One day the color of our skin won't cause a divide. One day we'll be family standing hand in hand. We will see the promised land. We will see the promised land. Hallelujah. There will be healing from this heartbreak we've been feeling. We'll sing in the darkest night, cause we know that the light will come. There will be healing. Hallelujah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There will be healing. Hallelujah. One day every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. One day when our tired and weary bones find their rest. One day when the power of evil's brought to an end, we will see the promised land. We will see the promised land. Hallelujah. There will be healing from this heartbreak we've been feeling. We'll sing in the darkest night, cause we know that the light will come. There will be healing, hallelujah. There will be healing, hallelujah. There will be healing. Hallelujah. Tanner and Michelle, thank you very much. That was beautiful. What a uh, what a beautiful day that. Uh, our Heavenly Father has granted unto us. This Sabbath day now, the sun is shining. The uh, temperatures are cooler. We have a wonderful place to come and uh, worship our Heavenly Father. The, uh, the thing that you're about to witness today is very important. You're going to see the hand of God at work in our congregation. These, uh, these three gentlemen maybe didn't raise their hands and volunteer for that which is about to uh, be bestowed upon them in just a few moments. They may have desired to be called, but it wasn't until our Heavenly Father conveyed that confirmation through the Holy Ghost upon our pastor. And with that same spiritual confirmation from other priesthood members of the validity of this call, of these calls, we each today are witnessing our Lord and Father at work using men on earth for what reason? To further the kingdom of Zion. 
There are many influences in these three gentlemen's lives. And those influences have brought them here today. Uh, the influences may have come from their earthly mothers and fathers. Some of it may have come from their spouses or perhaps other uh, family members. But they have indeed been influenced by people here upon this earth. As a convert to this church, um, I saw the priesthood first at the Buckner Church. And that was back in the uh, late 60s. Um, what I saw was men that was very different than the men that I worked with, uh, very different than uh, those that I've grown up around. These men... Uh, these priesthood members, they didn't cuss, they didn't smoke, they didn't drink, and they treated their wives and their children with the utmost respect. They placed our Heavenly Father at the center of their lives. I had been attending Buckner for some time on my own, with my wife, my two children. We've been going for quite a while to all the services. When one night, in the middle of the night, I woke to a dream. And a priesthood member from there, by the name of Rudolph Cornish, came to me in the dream, and he said these five words. He said, he said, what are you waiting for? Sorry to this day, it still has a great deal of meaning to me. The next morning while I was showering, I recalled that dream and I just started sobbing. The following Wednesday, I ended up going to prayer service like we always did. <clears throat> and then toward the end of the service, our pastor said, Rex, uh, I think you may have a testimony. I think you have a testimony to share. I looked at my wife and I said, told her, he knows about the dream. That's my testimony about my call to the priesthood. And today isn't about me, but I felt like I should share that because each priesthood member here has a testimony of why they are in God's priesthood. I'm looking forward to hearing them share with us today. For a call to worship from Matthew 4. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, I am he of whom it is written by the prophets, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they, believing on his words, believing on his words, left the net and straightway followed him.
Our Lord and Savior, we come before you now thankful for the presence of your Spirit that will come and be with us in this congregation that would minister unto each of those who are present and those who are listening. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to lift your name on high and to praise for, for we know that this world is hard and we know that this world um, does much to bring us down, but in this presence and in this sanctuary, we have an opportunity to just draw apart and to give you all praise, honor, and glory. And so in this hour, I'd ask that you would be here, that in your full spirit, that each would feel you. We thank you for the opportunities that we have to worship and the freedoms of this country. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, you may have noticed that Leanna isn't here today. She's home ill. Uh, so her daughter is pinch hitting for her. And now her son-in-law is going to pinch hit for her. So that's the reason Tony came off. Um, I believe beginning in September, we're going to start passing the uh, offertory plates again. And I think it's kind of good that we do that, especially for our children. Uh, but we haven't been doing that since COVID. If you have a, uh, an opportunity to want to give, there in the back, the plates are on the tables back there. Feel free to do that. Uh, we have been blessed uh, by being able to meet all the needs that we've had here in this congregation. Uh, obviously, we would love to be doing more, but we have to stay within our means. I appreciate each and every one of you who have given and continue to give. Thank you for doing so. And if you would bow with me, I'll offer a prayer over those. Our Lord and Father, you have definitely blessed us as a congregation. We're fortunate to be able to sit inside of a cool sanctuary to, uh, to know, that, Lord, that the lights will stay on, to know that we're going to have heat in the winter. Lord, uh, there are so many hearts that you've touched, and because you've done so, they have in turn uh, given of themselves some of it physically, some of it temporally. And we're thankful for each and every person who uh, has made a donation unto you in your name. Lord, we pray that you would bless all of the monies that are collected, that uh, they would be used wisely. And uh, I can't help but remember these three gentlemen that are about to be ordained. Continue to bless them, Lord, uh, not only this hour, but for the rest of the days of their lives is my prayer in Christ's name. Amen. upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace Are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look 
at the Savior and life more abundant and free. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. This day has been, uh, I haven't been looking forward to this day for a while. I've questioned whether or not I should accept this call. I've struggled for a couple years now with even the call that I've had, the the priesthood calling that I hold at this point. As a little boy, I always wanted to have some work for him. I wanted to be able to go among his people and bring the things that he would want me to bring to them. I sat in the back as a member of the church, and I watched Brian Fears baptize his son, and I wanted that. I wanted to be able to do that. When I got my first calling uh, to deacon, 
I knew I wouldn't be able to baptize my boys. But I was okay with that. With this calling, it will allow me to do something that uh, is pretty special. Not long after, I got a text from Ken asking to come over. <laughs> kind of figured in my mind what it was. It was a couple months later. My oldest boy, Tanner, asked me to to do the wedding for him. still question this calling, but I know that what he has for me is more than what I can imagine. I pray that uh, he would continue to Put me in those situations to bring more people to him. And I appreciate all the prayers that uh, you have offered up this week. I have felt all of them. I pray that I will be able to magnify this calling more than I have the last one. And I appreciate all your testimonies for me. Thank you. I too had 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 the thought that I was quite unworthy to accept the call to elder when Ken texted me back in back in back in November before th- th- Thanksgiving. I knew why why uh, he was coming over. And I, and I told him that I was terribly unworthy. And Ken said, David, we all are. Next year will be 50 years since I was baptized. And I did not think that um, I would live that long. And given all that's going on in the church, and we all know what's going on, I was blessed to be part of, of a family that chose to come to Parkview back in the early to mid-70s, before it was Parkview. Because when the schism came, 
Parkview decided not to fight. At least, not temporarily fight. And uh, here we are, many years later, and the world church still is, is confused as to why we're still here. That's high praise. I know and believe that this is the true church of God. I did my studying and research and beyond and past that I have hope and faith and belief that indeed the church was restored, the gospel was 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 restored, the priesthood was indeed restored back in eighteen thirty. Otherwise who knows where where I'd be now? I'm still unworthy to 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 accept this call, but there are testimonies, but there are testimonies by people of part few that I was going to be an elder. And I humbly and honestly, undeservedly accept this call. I believe that very soon the endowment is going to happen. The last time when the world will hear the true and defiled truth of the doctrine of God. And elders are, are going to be a part of that. I want to be part of the elders that go out and preach. Thank you. Good morning. Um, growing up my whole life, I knew I had a place doing his work. And, you know, going to, uh, going to church, going to reunion, going to camps, you know, you would sit back and you would imagine yourself up there. And I remember, you know, sitting back in reunion and just thinking, man, one day could I be like Bill Davies? Could I preach with the same passion that he does? And it was easy to fall back and, and think about that. If there's anything I've ever learned and grown up, it was be ready when the Lord calls. There's a song that's, uh, that's played a lot on baseball diamonds, and it's put me in coach. I'm ready to play. So for me, I was ready to go when the Lord called. I fell in love with this book called the Book of Mormon. I studied it in and out, learned everything about it. I grew strength from the, the men that were in that book, especially when the Lord called upon them. You know, Nephi was 16 years old when he was told to go back to Jerusalem. 
and get the brass plates. I think of men like Ammon and Alma and Alma II when they were called. Alma II, you know, cursed the church before he had his call to the priesthood. And then he built back up what he tore down. Twelve years ago, when I had my testimony that I was called to the priesthood, I wasn't everything I expected. But I also knew everything it came with. I knew the sacrifices that would have to be made. But I knew that night that the call was from him and that my prayers were answered. That Sunday in November when I uh, came to church, it was like any other normal, any other normal Sunday uh, in football season. And I, I stopped by Ken's office like I normally did, and we talked about um, what had gone on that, that night in football. And he stopped and he told me, hey, Josh, I need to, uh, you know, schedule some time to come over and talk to you. And um, me being who I am, of course, I made a joke and I was like, oh, am I in trouble? And he's like, no, I just need to, I need to talk with you. And at that time, it was pressed upon my heart that I had been called to the office of elder and that the call was from him. So um, that night, that next day, I prayed about it and, um, you know, having an identical twin, we, we practically talk every single day. And that day he had called me and he was asking me something about work and we, we talked about it. And then I had just mentioned to him, like, oh, yeah, the pastor's coming over today. And he goes, oh, you're being called to elder. I was like, you know, what, what would make you think of that? So after I had hung up the phone, it was pressed on my heart again that I had been called to the office of elder and that the call was from him. That night when uh, Ken came over, I actually gave him the wrong address by accident, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> but um, when Ken came over, he had shared his testimony of me being called to the office of elder. And one thing he, he said that anytime he gets a call, that you know he looks for confirmation again. And then at that time, it was then pressed on my heart that I had been called to the office of elder, and it was from him, and it was again a confirmation of this call. I'm ready to continue to do our Lord's work. As David said, you know, there are not easy times ahead. There are hard times. But I know our Lord has put us each in this spot today. And I look forward to continuing this mission that our wonderful Lord and Savior has called us to this day. Thank you.
Doug Jolly will be ordained to the office of priest by High Priest Ken Russ and Elder Mark Russ. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we uh, offer up our voice unto you this day to praise you, Father, for the beauty of your Son, for the redeeming love that he has uh, brought unto uh, your people. Thankful, Father, for the gospel message that uh, you have brought forth. And through that gospel message, Father, it calls your people to come. To come and to draw near unto you. And a part of that gospel message, Father, is the ordinances and sacraments which you have uh, instituted within your church. And through those, Father, we know that uh, you manifest yourself into your creation. And so it is this day, Father, we understand that which we do is most holy and sacred. And how precious it is, Father, when your children respond into a manner that calls men to come. And so it is with uh, my brother Douglas. That, Father, you have called unto him from a very early age. And it's been placed within him a desire, Father, to serve. A desire, Father, to be uh, greater than, uh, than he is within himself. And he has the gift, Father, in such a subtle and gentle way to touch the hearts of your people. And has that gift, Father, of caring and of loving. And has that continued desire to serve your people. And doing so, Father, serves you most of all. Father, we're thankful for this precious opportunity and for the calling that has been placed before him to be ordained to the office of priest in the Aaronic order. And in doing so, Father, we continue our prayer unto you. And we would pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And might you hear the continued prayer, Father. Doug, we ordain you to the office of priest to preach repentance and the remissions of sin through Jesus Christ by the endurance of faith on his name to the end. Amen. David Bain will be ordained to the office of elder by elders Richard Boyd, Wayne Bateman, and Corey Stark. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we do humbly approach your throne of grace this day and offer thanks for your presence, for the gifts of men, and for the gift of our brother David. Father, we thank you that in this latter day, you still call men of good heart to be your servants even as your son did when he walked this earth. I thank you for David and the gifts that he brings, the quiet strength, his humility, his willingness to do whatever is asked of him. Brother David, You may not feel worthy. You are not worthy because of you, but you are worthy because God has called you. 
You're an instrument in his hands, and he will always be with you. He will guide you. Your training and your uh, preparation for this office began even as a small child, as you sat and learned from your parents and from those other members of the priesthood as you listen. David, you are called because of the choices you have made in your great faith. You are called with a holy calling. David Bain, we ordain you to the office of of Eldi in the order of Melchizedek to teach, expound, and exhort, and preach repentance and remissions of sins through Jesus Christ by the endurance of faith on his name to the end. Amen. Joshua Cunningham will be ordained to the office of elder by elders Trace Boyd and Mark Russ. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, again we would approach your throne of grace and offer our thanks for the gifts that you have bestowed upon us, for the glory of this day, for the opportunity to lay our hands upon your servant Joshua, to thank you, Lord, for his boldness, for his eagerness to preach the gospel, for his love of your word and his dedication to your son, Jesus Christ. Joshua was raised of goodly parents, and the desire to follow you has been on his heart from an early age. Joshua, because of the choices you have made and your dedication to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you too are called with a holy calling. Joshua Cunningham, I ordain you to the office of elder in the order of Melchizedek to teach, expound, and exhort, and to preach repentance through the remission of sins through Jesus Christ by the endurance of faith on his name to the end. Amen. These words of support don't come from me. They come from our Heavenly Father, from Section 4. Now behold, a marvelous work is about to come forth among the children of men. Therefore, O ye that embark on the service of God, see that you serve him with all your heart, might, and mind, and strength, that ye may stand blameless before God at the last day. Therefore, if ye have desires to serve God, ye are called to the work for before. For behold, the field is white, all ready to harvest. And lo, he that thrusteth in his, his sickle with his might, the same layeth up in store 
that he perish not, but bring salvation to his soul. And faith, hope, charity, and love with an eye single to the glory of God qualifies him for the work. Remember, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, godliness, charity, humility, diligence. Ask, and ye shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Now, I would ask this congregation, for all of those who would support these three men in the calling of their office to the priesthood, would you please stand? Look around, gentlemen. You have the support of your congregation. Please be seated. Heavenly Father, Lord, how wonderful thou art. That Father, that you uh, love your creation so dearly.
that you reveal yourself, Father, unto your people. And you continually summon unto them, Father, to come. To come and bask in the joy of your spirit. To come and partake of the fruit that is so sweet and precious. To come and experience the presence of your spirit. Indeed, how wonderful thou art. And Father, you have called unto this people here in this congregation to gather in a way of faithfulness, in a way that would respond out of love, in a way that would... Uh, allow you to reveal yourself on a very personal level. And this day, Father, there are those in this body whom you have touched so dearly that they had felt the outpouring of your spirit upon them. And there are those this day, Father, who have felt your touch and they know deep within their heart that there is a work before them and they know who they are father One of the greatest offices of ministry, Father, is that of member. A member who loves you, who cares, who reaches out, who is concerned about their fellow neighbor. A member, Father, who glorifies you in their life. And yet there is a responsibility with that to allow your light to continue to shine. And yes, Father, there are responsibilities of priesthood. Even as we have experienced this day of the joy, and yet, Father, there is more to come. And I pray that my young brethren would be patient Do not allow the world to be caught up within your heart. Seek earnestly for the things of his kingdom. For they are everlasting. Be mindful of the beauty of the redeeming love of his son. and allow that love of his to shine forth. We are so blessed. And yes, we are a part of this great and marvelous work. And we know as long as we will be faithful unto thee, Father, that that work will continue until the fulfillment of thy kingdom. And our desire is, Father, to be a part of that great and marvelous work. Might we ever be humble. Might we ever be found servants of thine. And might we hear your voice, Father, as it calls unto us each and every day. Come, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Father, we thank you. Might you abide with us, bless us, as we seek to bring honor and glory unto thee. Might your Son, Jesus Christ, ever be before us. 
and might we look up and live and experience the joy of the beauty that you would have for us. Father, bless this, your people, as we would go forward. Is my prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, even Jesus the Christ. Amen.